Well, they're not a scholar, so we, 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 we can't receive their words. When the Bible says, no, you're not, there are not many wise, not many noble, not many powerful men are called. If you want to find the true knowledge of Jesus Christ, you don't want to look in the world of charisma. You want to look in the world of humility as those who love God and know they have a need for God. Because not many mighty, not many noble men are called. And through the wisdom of this world, man has missed God. When you see somebody simple, but yet they know that word of God, then you know that God's been with them. This is was the case with Peter, with Peter and John, when they stood amongst the scholars, proclaiming the name of Jesus. And they looked and said, we know these men are ignorant, meaning they're common. They have not been taught by the rabbis. But they're not learned in the letter. Then how can they withstand us? Well, first of all, the Holy Ghost is greater than any scholar. The Bible says that when you are put before uh, anyone concerning him, he said, don't worry about what you're going to say. He said, because the Holy Ghost will give you a word of wisdom. He will give you a word of wisdom that the game says, the skeptics cannot speak against. You see, so when the Holy Ghost sees these game says and those who mock the word of God come forth, if you're in tune with God, you might not be able to quote the scripture, you might not have read many books, but that Holy Ghost will come forth. Because he is the word of God. Amen. And he will put to shame those that try to come against you. And they'll look at you and say, who have you been talking to? Where do you get that from? And all you can say is, it's coming to me. Because God hears our conversation. I feel a virtue. I'm saying to I feel a virtue so strong. Let me say that again. You may hear some things and you may not know as much as the person talking to you with what happened. You feel mm, nervous, but something in you just won't let you eat it. You don't know what that Holy Ghost is saying, reject it. I feel a virtue. I feel, let me slow down. Because I've been feeling manifestations. We've had praise service, you see? And the music was all right. But the anointing wasn't in that. That was virtue. The Holy Ghost was ministering. And he still is. The Holy Ghost knows his own teaching. The Holy Ghost knows the word of God. I don't know what I'm saying. This. Okay, I'll take my time. The Holy Ghost knows the word of God. That's why... Sometimes when you hear certain things, you don't quite feel right. And, and those that are learned, they may bring it about whoever, whatever, and whatever, whatever they may say, hmm, how is it that they couldn't see it? Or how is it that they said the same thing that this person said, that that person just said? Because that person, that person, that person have been moved by the same spirit. Because you know a lot don't mean what you know is right. You see, there's book knowledge and there's Holy Ghost revelation. Three people can read the same book and two come out knowing nothing. One can quote it front to back. Depends on the individual. And to tell you the truth, I don't know how I got on that. I don't know how to get on that. Okay. What did I say to bring me to that point? I felt, I felt a virtue. I felt a virtue. I don't know how I got on that. I, I got to figure out where I left off at. Mm. But I, listen, the Holy Ghost is more. See, the Holy Spirit is real. All by himself. And that's what a lot of church people don't understand. The Holy Spirit is real. He's real. And Jesus said that the comforter will come. He says he will come speaking. He will come and what will the Holy Ghost say? You heard of me. Yeah. Holy Ghost, I heard of you. And to keep us from being deceived. He said this spirit, because he knew Jesus prophesied it, that in the last days many false prophets shall come and they will not do just a little damage, but they will do great damage. 
They shall deceive men. He says, but when the spirit of truth is come. Why do we need the Holy Ghost especially in these last few days? There were false prophets, but not as many as it is today. Jesus said that many false prophets shall arise, meaning they weren't born yet. They hadn't come forth yet. But since his death and resurrection, they come up after they were. Just like he said. And they have deceived many. That word many means mostly, largely, or common. The average person is deceived. And they are so smart, so slick with the wisdom of the world that if it were possible, they would deceive the very chosen. That's how good they are. But he said, guess what? It is not possible. You cannot deceive a real child of God. Why? Because my sheep know my voice. Oh, they may not understand everything, but they know my voice. They know my presence. They know my guidance and a stranger they will run from. I might not be able to break it down, but I don't like what you're saying. So I'm out of here. I feel the Holy Ghost. That's why the Holy Ghost comes to guide us into what? All the truth. Not the commentators. Not the post-apostolic thought. I often say to myself, why have we got all these scholars in the New Testament, scholars in the this? And when you listen to them debate, they only debate over languages. What the Greek says and the Hebrew says, well, how about what the Spirit says? And somebody says you can't understand the word of God if you don't know Greek and Hebrew, then how about all these other scriptures that were written in other languages? And those people can't speak a word of Greek or Hebrew. The Holy Ghost speaks in every language. I said he speaks in every language. And without one Bible, without one concordance, without one piece of paper with a script on them, we still have a word. We can still receive the word like they did in the beginning by the voice of God. These books were not here at first. These books came from the originator. God spoke and said, write. I feel, son, I feel a virtue. I, I, I keep feeling a, I, God said that my word is spirit and it is life. To say the original words of God were written in the Old Testament in Hebrew and part of it in Aramaic, and the New Testament in Kodi Greek is correct. But to say the word of God in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek is incorrect. The word of God is spirit and it is life. And when God calls somebody from Russia, he ain't talking in Hebrew. He ain't talking in English. But the Holy Ghost is speaking in Russian. And in China, he ain't speaking in Russian. But he's talking to that man that I'm the only understand Chinese. The Holy Ghost is speaking in Chinese. This is over here speaking in Japanese. This is over here speaking in Swahili. This is not from the day of Pentecost. People from all over the nation was there. And the Holy Ghost fell upon all of the apostles. And every man from every nation. The apostles were Galileans. Let me break it down to you. If you don't mind, I'm not through the scripture trying to give you understanding. Everybody in the room was from Atlanta. And they spoke like Atlantis. Everybody outside the room was from everywhere. Different countries. So they said, how can all these people from Atlanta speak all them different languages? Because the Holy Ghost knows every tongue. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. How can every tongue confess except by the Holy Ghost? And they can't confess if the Holy Ghost don't know their language. So the word of God is spirit. And it is truth. God will not confine his word to the knowledge of men. He won't do that. 
And so they talk about the church fathers, church fathers, this, this, and that. And I said to myself, why do you have to be a scholar then to understand the writings of simple men? It's not that deep. And then they got the nerve to say, well, we don't believe Jesus said that. We, no, no, we don't think Jesus run around saying I am that I am. You, you know Jesus walked the earth from 2,000 years ago, right? And then you finna sit up and say, what you don't believe he said? Are you serious? Like, were you there? Here's the catch. They add this to the Bible. They put that in the Bible. You know what I say? Is it true? They said, I don't know why I'm saying this. They said 1 John 5 and 7 is not an ancient manuscript. There are three that are record in heaven. Father, Word, and Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And a lot of the newer versions, that's not in there. It's in the King James and a few others. They said because they couldn't find it in any of the manuscripts before the 1500s. And some talk about the story about how a monk added to the scriptures to support the Holy Trinity. Well, okay. I said to myself, if he was trying to support the Holy Trinity, the Holy Ghost intervened. Because the Holy Trinity believes in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and that the Son is the eternal Son. That always in heaven there was the Father and the eternal Son of God standing next to him. That's what they believe. But the Bible says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. They didn't say the Son. It was the Word that became the Son. So it was the Word that was very record in heaven. That the Word was with God and the Word what? Was God. So if this guy was trying to support the Trinity, he messed up. Because he should have said it right. And then the Trinity teaches that God is three water in one. But if he was trying to support the Trinity, he messed up again. Because he said what Jesus said, I and my Father are one. I think God ain't going to let you mess up nothing. You be slick if you want to. Somebody said they added Matthew 28 and 19 to support the Trinity. Okay, maybe they added it, but they messed up again. Because now we know there's one name for the Father, one name for the Son, and one name for the Holy Ghost. Oh, they messed up again. Oh, Lord, say you will not trip up my word. I ain't going to let them mess up my word. He said, I will preserve my word. And now they're wondering. And you listen to these guys talk. And then the guy that he said that he, he the one that was a skeptic, now he says, that it's amazing how Christianity has trailed from a handful of people and the whole world has been influenced by it. Maybe he's coming back to his senses. Or trying to let the Christian world know, hey, he ain't going too far. But what else is he going to come to? What other conclusion he going to come to? He's going to end up dead like the rest of the skeptics. You notice all the skeptics are dead with the same word as you here? They come up with the same arguments. Because why? They had to prove it wrong. We can rely on God's word. We can. Somebody says, how much can we rely on it? Thanks for asking. You can rely on it like this, son. From dust you come, dust you what? Rely on it. That's how reliable it is. I feel a virtue. Let us not, let us not be so foolish to think we're smarter than the creator. Let us not be so foolish to think we are more intelligent than God. The Holy Ghost, he's real. And he will teach us. He will guide us. There was, you know, the apostle doctrine has been in China a long time. One of the largest churches of the Jesus name faith is in China. And one way he got there was a seven, a salvation army man who did not believe in the apostle doctrine, took a boat to China to take to them the message of Salvation Army and the Trinitarian Doctrine. But when he got to China, the Spirit of the Lord moved upon him and he baptized all of those people in the name of Jesus Christ. He was told to do so. 
And there was a Jesus name preacher, a scholar, who worked to this day in one of the well-known universities uh, of, of, uh, of research. And the man's son came to him and said, here is a book that nobody has seen. It's the diary of my father. We want you to have it. And he read it, how he traveled and this and that. And he read how he went into China. But the Lord inspired him to change the message to the apostle doctor. He went back to the research center. They had everything. And he looked it up and there it was. They found the research and the story of this man. And how he was inspired. Not knowing the apostle doctor, but he was about to enter and take the gospel to a foreign land. Who served many gods. So God wanted to, since he was one of the first, God wanted to make sure he did it right. And he baptized those Chinese in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, they say Chinese and Korean can send the missionaries over here to convert Americans. Okay. Let me slow down. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because he knows more than all of us. He knows more than all of us. The Holy Spirit knows more than all of us. And that's why you hear me emphasizing the Holy Ghost so much. Because you can't, what can you do without it? The whole world uh, uh, moves by the Spirit of God. God created the heavens and the earth, but he spoke no direction until the Holy Ghost came on the scene. Then he said, let there be light, and there was. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of truth. In him is no what? No lie. I feel the virtue. You know, we are, as people, we are, we are such a proud monument of dirt. The thing we can correct God. How can we sit up there and correct God's word, but we have no answer for the problems today? So they all get together. Who has the answer to solve all the murders? Well, I don't know. Who has, who has the answer for all the gun violence? Well, we're working on that. Who has the answer for starvation? Hmm. Who has an answer to keep the population down? Well, we're trying this and we're trying that. We're trying that. Who has the answer for this and that? Well, we're working on this and we're working on that. We really don't know. Hey, but we do have an answer. We can find out where God went wrong. Oh. We can correct God. We can correct God. We're sure of that. But you can't correct yourself. People, don't be so cocky. Don't be so cocky. Don't even. Son, I feel a virtue. Let me break it down. Don't even dare. Put yourself in the position to stand up against the living God. Don't even think about it. Sometimes people used to say, I would pray for people and a miracle would take place. And people would testify and say, I want to thank God that the Lord touched my body. Oh, and, and, oh, and you too, Bishop, I got to the point where saying you ain't got to mention me. It was the Lord. Don't put, don't put me in trouble. You see? I ain't finna get mad. I'm gonna get mad if you leave him out, but I ain't finna get mad if you leave me out. You get what I'm saying? You ain't gotta be recognized as him. I feel a virtue. Oh my God. I, I feel a virtue. I feel a God bless you. Anybody from the virtue? Anybody from understood what I was saying? Did anybody, when I tell from the virtue, did anybody understand what I'm saying? Maybe I'll tell y'all start raising your hand. Think I'm making this stuff up. You see? Okay. How can you block the will of God? And the Lord speaking to Moses in Numbers 13, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe. Of their father shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. Now, lately, since that presence, that blinding me has been gone, God's been telling me to when you read the word of God, take your time and listen carefully and pay attention to what you're reading. Amen? 
And Moses, by the commandment of God, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All these men were heads of the children of Israel. And, that, and these were their names of the tribes of Reuben. You ready? Shammu, the son of Zachor, of the tribe of Simeon. Saphat, the son of Horeb, of the tribe of Judah. Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, of the tribe of Issachar. Eogal, the son of Joseph, of the tribe of Ephraim. Osea, the son of Nun, of the tribe of Benjamin. Palachi, the son of Rephaz, of the tribe of Zebulun. Gedeon, the son of Zodai, of the tribe of Judah, namely, of the tribe of, of the tribe of Joseph, namely, of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susai, of the tribe of Dan, Emil, the son of Gamaliel, of the tribe of Asher, uh, Sithor, the son of, of Michael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nahabi, the son of, uh, of Vasai, of the tribe of Gad, Geul, the son of Mekai. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hosea, the son of Nun, Joshua. And Moses sent them to sprout the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get ye up this way, south, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong, weak, few, or many. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and told Moses to pick elders from every tribe. And in the picking, Hosea came forth, and the Bible said, Hosea, and, and Moses called him Joshua. Evidently, when Joshua came up, Moses saw something in him. We're going to call him Deliverer. Joshua. But what's most important here is that it started off by saying, and the Lord spoke to Moses. When God speaks concerning your life, you must understand that if he's leading you in a direction and you are in his will, nothing can stop you. Understand what I'm saying? Nothing can stop you. Because God is saying, this is what I want you to do. And if God is backing you, and you are in this day with God, who can stop God from doing what he wants you to do? Uh, listen, I need you to hear this. If you feel as though there's a will of God for your life, and you're walking in, you can be just as bold as a lion, and you can stand strong against all opposition, because if God is with you, then who can be against you? Who can stop the will of God from taking place in your life? And you are walking in obedience. Jesus told the disciples that he sent them as sheep amongst wolves. You heard me say this before, I said it again. And he said, but every hair on your head is numbered. So therefore he said, don't be afraid. Whatever you hear in your ear, you get on top of the house. And you sin. Also, how many times have we heard from God, but because we were afraid, we didn't say it. We didn't do it. But if you know that God is in it, and I, I learned that the hard way. He told Jeremiah, don't be afraid of the faces. If you do, I'll confuse you among the people. For years, I was afraid of the faces, and I got confounded and confused. And I knew what I heard was right. But I was afraid, and I got chastised. Now I feel the virtue. Now God said, and he told his disciples, whatever I tell you in the ear, you get on top of the house and you blast it. Well, people may not like it, but they can't stop you. Because I'm with you. Now the hair in your arm, every hair in your head is done, and I know everything about it. He said that nothing by any means will hurt you. Nothing will stop you from doing what I've instructed you to do. Can you see that? If it's a God's will for something to take place, what storm can stop it? What tornado can stop it? What jealousy can stop it? What demon can stop it? Nothing can. Because you have all the power of heaven backing you up. It's God's will. I, I, listen. Let me explain this to you again. If you are walking in God's will, then you can be bold as a lion. 
Because nothing can stop it from coming to pass. And you're walking in obedience with God. Oh, you're not being proud, but you can surely stand bold. You can surely, you can surely stand confident. And no matter what doubt comes your way, you can walk with assurance because you know that this is what God wants you to do. And guess what? They fight against you, they're fighting against and they ain't finna win. Moses said, you go into the land, check it out. And and and, 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 and verse 19 says, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what city that be that they dwell in it, whether it's tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be far or lean, whether that be wood they in or not, and be ye of faith, go in courage, and bring up the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of first trip grace. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zion unto Rehob as men came to Hamlet. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahim and Shishai and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoe and Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Ishkal and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of rape. And they bared between two upon a staff. And they brought up the pomegranates and other seeds. The place was called the brook Eschol because the cusses of grapes, which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. 40. It's a number of testing as well. 40 is a number of, of fullness of establishment. David ruled 40 years, Saul ruled 40 years, Solomon ruled 40 years, and the king of Israel was one. After Solomon, they split. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. Then all was done, fulfilled, completed. Certain numbers carry the same meaning. 40 is the same as 4. And they went and came from Moses unto Aaron and to all the congregation. And the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran unto Kadesh. And they brought back word of the men and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came up unto the land where the thou sent us up, and surely it flowed with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Amen there. And the Milakites dwelled in the land of the south, the Hittites and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwelled in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwelled by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Pay attention. These boys were about to make a great mistake. First of all, they forgot. This is how we mess up our blessings. Let's do it. First of all, they forgot that God told Moses to send them. They forgot that they were moving and acting on God's word. And when they got over there, they had specific direction. God just don't see you out blindly. Now they made Men from every tribe. And then when Oshia popped up, Moses looked at him and said, I'm going to call him Joshua. You see, sometimes it takes, certain, it takes certain situations to bring the good in you out. You may feel like you're not worth anything or can't do anything, and then all of a sudden something will happen or, or you will be tempted to try something and find out you have hidden talents that you do not of. The things that God sent us through, the trials and the tribulations and the testing, come, amen, to strengthen us and to show us what is in us, good and the bad. So many times God will allow you to go through a situation so that you can see what's in you. And a lot of times the situations come to make you strong or to bring you out. And we see then, as we know the story, I completed, ten men doubted. Ten is the number of testing, the number of judgment, the number of change. But two agree. So now we see then that many are called, but God 
may call you to do. Or you may be called to fulfill the will of God. But unless you walk in obedience, you can block the will of God in your life. First of all, by forgetting who's sending you. These men say, we did as you instructed. We brought back the fruit of the land. And it is a land that flows with milk and honey. But, I'm going to break it down. A lot of people go through the emotions of doing what the Word of God says, but they don't believe it. It's right there before they face, but they don't believe it. You become blind. Why they become blind? Because they forgot the beginning of the chapter was that. And God said go. When you forget that God is in control, you lose focus. Let me slow down. They had proof that the land was fruitful, full of milk and honey. They had proof. But instead of leaning on God's word, he said, I'll give you a land full of milk and honey. They began to add their own frame of thinking. Now, instead of leaning on God who said, I want you to go see the land that I've given you. He's already given it, people. He's already made a way to bless you. Listen carefully. You have to listen. You, you, you have to listen carefully. You understand what I'm saying? Send thou men that thou may assert the land of Canaan, which I give. You're not listening to the Holy Spirit. You're not paying a close attention to what you're saying or what you're doing. God said, listen to me. Send them to check out the land that I give. God said, I've given it to you already. How many times has God came to give us a blessing and we give it right back in English? I feel the virtue. He opens the door and we close the door in English. Because we have lost focus on God's word. They lost focus on the word. They went over there and they saw the giants. They saw the mighty men. They saw the walls and the fortress and this and that. And they forgot about the very blessing they had in their hands. We get to looking at all the negative aspects of things. We get to looking at all the things of doubt. We get to walking by sight and not by faith. And we kill the very blessing. And it's right there in our hands. But we can't appreciate it. This is how you block the will of God in your life. Because you be begin to panic. And you begin to add your own frame of thinking to God's plan. And it doesn't work that way. It's God's plan for you. Let them go into the land that I have given. If they had thought, now Joshua and Caleb, they were different. We can do this while that God gave it to us. If you just listen to the word, you will overlook all those things that come in you. If you just listen to the word and stand on the word, then the things that come to destroy you won't save you. Because that's not what your focus is on. Your focus is on the word of God. He said, I have given it. Because you're still focusing on the things that are bringing you down. I tell you, some of y'all talk too much. It is true that the land flows of milk and honey. We have tasted of the fruit of the Holy Ghost. We know that it is real. We brought some back. Just stop right there. God's word is true. But no, you add the blood. But, now that's where the devil comes in. And then he said, the Lord told them to eat of every tree of the garden. But the tree of knowledge don't eat. The devil says, but. The doubt comes in. Instead of you standing fast, you begin to listen to that other voice. That's contrary to what God said. They begin to walk by what? 
sight. How do you block God's blessing in your life instead of you being obedient to God's will? You begin to panic because you walk by sight. You begin to look at things according to your strength and the way you think it ought to be. Quite naturally, you all can't whoop these people. You all were brick masons and fathers. Quite naturally, you all are not men of war. So when you look at it as though it's you that had to do it all, quite naturally, you might lose. But if you look at it from God's eyesight, he said he will give it to you. He said he will back you. Then you take your eyes off of you and what you can do or can't do, and you put your eyes on the Lord. And when you know that God is, listen, I know what I'm saying here. You want your life to change? You want the situation to change? Quit playing with the Holy Spirit. Quit playing games. Get in prayer and really know what God is. God show me. He'll talk to you in a dream. He'll talk to you in a vision. But he'll move upon you whereby you can understand if you mean business. Amen. And sometimes even when you go to bed, say, God, when you pray, say, God, show me. Show me what I need to know. And many times he'll come to you in your sleep. Because the Bible says God visits men in their dream and sleep because you're humble. Turn the TV off. Turn it down. And pray. God speaks to many times. I've asked God to show me. And then I will go to sleep and I'll wake up with the answer. Amen. I'll wake up with the answer many times. When you know you're in God's will and you know understand me. You can't be stopped. He don't need no help from you except you do what he tells you. You don't have to be afraid of anyone. But you better know it's God. They, they said, we can't do this. That, Letting your word override God's word is a danger. Amen. It says, listen, and Caleb steal the people before Moses and let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with us said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched into the children of Israel, saying, The land uh, through which we have gone to search, it is a land that eaten up the inhabitants thereof. It's big, it's vast. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anton, which come of giants. And we were in our own sights. 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 This is the way we see it. This is the way I see it. This is the way I see it. This is not what God said. This is the way I see it. This is the way I feel it. It's not what God said. It's not what's written. But you see, this is the way I see it. We are as grasshoppers in their eyes. When you start talking like that, you want to marry stepped out of the will of God. Because everything God tells you, you're not going to see it. Neither will you understand it right away. But it will come to pass. And your understanding will come. Many times after the resurrection, then the disciples said, the scripture said, then they remember what he said. I feel a virtue. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. You see, this, this, this ministry, the Lord told me, I'm going to tell you, this type of ministry, if you think you can, you can. That ain't true. When the scripture says, whatever a man thinking in the heart goes, he don't mean if you think you can, you can. That means whatever is in you is what you really are. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. And notice what they did. What kills the will of God in your life? Doubt. 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 And a lack of faith in yourself. Inferiority. Fear. Low self-esteem. Oh, you, it's a done deal. You through. God says you're great, you say who's great. God says you can, you say I can. God says be strong, you say I'm weak. God says I choose you, why me? I look. Low self-esteem, fear, inferiority complex, 
not believing that you are who God says you are will block you from walking in God's will. You have to know that if God told you that he's going to make sure you can do it. You have to know that God is with you and he will equip you. Believe in God, I may have it twisted a little bit and you shall prosper. Something like that, it says believe in his prophet and you shall be established. God says you believe in him, you're going to be all right. You believe in the messengers of God, you're going to be all right too. And then I also understand this. It says that we are more than conquerors. You are more than conquerors. That God is able to do with seemingly and above that which you can even imagine. He said according to the power that works where? In you. God told Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. The angel was speaking. And Gideon looked around and said, who are you calling courageous? If I'm so valid and so strong, why am I hiding my food like the rest of them? God said, you are a mighty man. I see something in you. <laughs> Gideon said, if I'm so strong, I'm hiding. I ain't seen God move since our fathers. That's why God told Gideon, no, you got strength, man. Gideon said, well, if I have the strength, prove it, show me. I'm going to take this fleece material and put it on the ground, and in the morning, let the ground, let, let the feet be wet and the ground dry. Don't let the dew hit it. Got up in the morning and there it was. Get in and stop there. He said, okay, I'm going to put it back on the ground. This time let the ground be dry and, and the feet wet and reverse it, whatever. And got up and there it was, reverse. He still wasn't satisfied, but God saw something in him. God said, I can't use this man as long as he's doubting himself. I can't use him as long as he's afraid to stand up. Because my spirit is not a spirit of fear. God said, I must show this man that in him, by my grace, there is strength. So he woke Gideon up one night. Get up. Get your servant. Go down in the enemy's line. And he snuck like a little puppy. And he went and came by the first time he came by. He heard some media guys talking. Son, they were talking. And one guy came and said, man, I had a dream. Get him back there, listen. What dream you had? A big tumbleweed came. Again, there was a nobody to the meeting tonight. They always came and ransacked the Israelites for 20 years. A, a big tumbleweed came and it rolled and knocked out all of my kids. Be careful who you take drinks to. Somebody would say, well, if it was a, if it was a tumbleweed, it means just the opposite. It could have been a palm tree. If you dream of a lady, then it's a man. I mean, look, God is specific. Holy Ghost is real. And then the man got up and he said, now, this is Gideon listening. Could you imagine? Okay, okay, okay. Let me put it to you. Please. Don't let me forget Gideon. You've been praying for a house or praying for the right job. And you're not trying to be greedy, but something you really need. And a lot of people are out to get it and you say, God said it's mine, but you're having a hard time believing God said it's for you. And then for some reason, you just feel to go down to the office where they were making a decision. And the door was locked. You couldn't get in, but you heard people talking. And they said, you know what? We got 30 applications here. But you know that Christian man or that Christian woman that came down here? What church they go to? Time not to here. You know what? They didn't have the, they, you know, the report wasn't bad. But you know what? We're going to give it to them. And you heard this. Amen. How you going to leave that building? The Lord, you don't say, I'm off to see you with that. <laughs> you don't go crazy to God. You're going to be back home with him. You're going to fall You're going to say, hello. <laughs> Praise him. How are you doing? I'm doing right. I'm blessed. I'm doubly blessed. I'm triple blessed. And you're going to tell all the same. I knew God told me. I knew what God told me. Well, then how do you make it easy yourself when you heard the man say, that's the sword of Jesus.
bottle. Break it down to 300. He didn't fret because he knew God was with him. That's what Jacob and Caleb did. Joshua and Caleb stood up and said, you people are wrong. God is with us. You're finna block our blessing. You're finna stop the will of God because of your doubt. Because you are not listening. He said, I have given it to you. You know the story, don't you? All the people doubted. So I feel the virtue. Should I say it? I'm going to say it. These ten people, elders, were so persuasive. They were so convincing that they convinced some two million people that God was with them. And somebody looking on would have said, they must be right. Oh, no. Because you convince them, don't mean you're right. Because you all talk somebody, don't mean you're right. You might not talk to them. That could have been one conversation and you could have let somebody else win. And when they got the people to doubt what the men didn't understand, you all are getting them based on how you think. Feel based on how you feel, based on the way you see it, based on the way you think it ought to be. Make an accusation of what can't be done, and yet you were in that land for 40 days and 40 nights, and not one giant touched you, not one warrior saw you. You were unharmed. God said, I've been keeping you all this time, and you want to doubt me now? What has blinded you? Dropping the will of God. What blinds you? You forget the word of God. You begin to lean on your own understanding. You begin to doubt yourself. And when they call the people to doubt the word of God, then the people turn on the middle of God. Now they want to stone Moses them. For lying to them. But Moses didn't lie. Then Caleb and Joshua stood back up and said, we know, now they're talking, right? We're more than able. God is with us. Now, now they're doing it right. God is with us. He said he's with us. We can't move. Now they got the message. But the people the ten have put so much doubt. Okay. Jesus told the Pharisees, you don't enter into the kingdom and you block us. You don't ever want to be used to block us. Y'all ain't hearing me. <laughs> their words, the preaching of their words, blocked them. Because they didn't have confidence in what God said. They doubted themselves. They were going on their feelings and they were very convincing. Now what's amazing, brethren, is that the ten men and the two men all walked the same ground. They all saw the same thing, brethren. But they came up with two different answers. They saw the same giants. They saw the same warriors, but the two said, we can do this. What was the difference? The ten was walking by sight. The two were standing by faith. They kept their eyes on God's word. The two thought about how we're going to do this. Some of you didn't think it right that you can do it yourself. But the two were saying, we know it's going to take God. He's able. He's already brought us out of Egypt. Now they want to stone the preacher. Like some of y'all want to stone me. I don't know how saved I am yet, I might throw it back. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll duck and do it, whatever. I'm just talking, just don't cry. No. Then they wanted to stone. Joshua just stood up. Okay, but then they made God angry. 
Then God came forth and he told Moses, get out of the way. I'm going to slay all these people that have made me to look a disgrace. Then Moses stood up, Lord, if you kill these folks, they're going to say you brought them out of Egypt. Just to destroy them. The people saying we, we should have stayed back in Egypt. Just to quit. They came through all the power of God across the Red Sea and they forgot. We forget too easily what God has done. And we should go back. It was better in that world than it is now. Okay, you keep thinking that. And God said, I'll wipe them out. Then Moses stood in the gap and he prayed and convinced God, God, please. Let's not do this. Spread people. Which gives you the understanding of what Hebrews says in the book of Hebrews. Obey them to have a rule over you. As they that do what? Watch for your souls. As they that must do what? Give an account unto God. For who? For you. That they may do it with what? Joy. And not with grief. For if they have to do it with grief, it is unprofitable for what? For you. Oh, you can pray and act for food and pray prophet, prophetess and and how that you do this step, but if you out of but if a real man of God has to step up and say, God did not write your prayer is no good. If he's a real ruler, you in trouble. You are in trouble. Listen. Now we learn to, as I told you, to Caleb and Jake and Joshua and the other men. Your words, are you listening? can destroy people completely unto death. Can wipe them out. They're no good anymore. Or they can give life. If you know you have to get some gab and you're very persuasive, be careful how you use that. Because God said, I tell you what then, that whole generation is going to die in the wilderness. And then they started saying, what about our children? Make an excuse to serve God. What about my kids? God said because they said, I can't save the kids, I'm going to save the kids, and the parents are going. Don't ever put anything before God. The only two men of this generation that will live will be Caleb and Joshua. God said that every other person would die. They will not see the promise. Then the people really started crying. Because they listened to the words of what? Ten men who were convinced. But they were wrong. And so you know what happened? Anybody know what happened? When they realized that they messed up, they wanted to do right. Okay, we're going to go. Okay, let's go. We can do this. Get up. Let's go. Moses said, no. No, God is with us. Moses said, nope. One thing you're going to have to learn, you got to move in God's time. It's his will be done, not yours. You don't tell God what to do or how to do it. And if you can't humble yourself and submit yourself to the will of God, what makes you think God will hearken to you? He said, don't do it. Because God ain't with you. So some of the men got on their horses. Guess what? And they wouldn't get in the way. The Bible said that was the enemy that's sitting there waiting on them. And when they got there, they massacred them. Because God ain't with you, it won't stand. That's why I tell you all sometimes, you want to get into discussions, you want to think the right, no problem. But be sure, whatever you think you know, it can carry you over the side. And God said this, I'm going to judge the people According to what they've done. Hello? Why do I keep going through this? Because you keep doing the same old thing. You keep going through the same old thing, acting the same old way. Leaning on the same old feelings and the same old emotions that get you nowhere. You're just blocking the will of God. You need to break the circle. How is it? By learning to be obedient to God's word. And follow his instructions. He said, the same amount of days you walked in the promised land for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm going to hold each day as a year. You will be in this wilderness for 
40 years until the last one of you got there. So their own footsteps walk their own death. Their own doubt walked them down because they would not believe God to bring them out. You don't believe I can bring you out? Come believe me in. They forgot God's word. They didn't pay attention. They didn't have enough faith to believe that they were able. They had no such esteem. Inferiority complex. They didn't believe in themselves. They walked by sight. They were moved by their own emotions. They overlooked the blessings they already had. And they lost that blessing. Now if you can agree to any of this, then evidently if you ain't already lost it, you're about to. You block the will of God. For your life. But God's will will go on. It's not you, somebody else. And don't ever be afraid to make a Holy Ghost stand. When everybody around you is going against God and against His way, you still stand because you reap what you. Yes. Josh and Caleb reap what they sow. But you got to make it plain. You're not with the way of doubt. By the confessions of your own mouth, you should be judged and justified. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephthah, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us. A land which flows with whipping honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bent stone over stone. And then the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation. Before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have shown among them. How long will you act like you don't know me? After all the things I've done for you? How can you deny me? Oh, God got feelings going. on. God said, I will smite them with pestilence and this arrogant and will make a thee a greater nation and mightier than them. And that's what Moses did to pray for. Your own footsteps keep you in the same place. For every day they walked in that promised land, it's going to be a year. Why keep going in a circle? Because you're walking in the same footsteps. You're doing the same thing. Making the same mistakes. That circle won't break, neither will you go forward until you learn to pay close attention to what God is trying to tell you. And then you have to believe that God is a reward of them that diligently seek you can't look at yourself, but you have to look at yourself through the eyes of God. If God said you can, regardless of how you feel, then know that you, you can and you will if you trust Him. I feel the virtue. Pressing God in the name of Jesus, give an open eye to the soul that desires to do the right thing. Those that really want your purpose. Let his word settle in the heart. Give them an open eye to see plainly. Keeping their eyes off of the situation and keeping their eyes off of themselves. Let them put their feelings aside. I feel the virtue. And give them a sure word. Make it plain. And then they come up out of the wilderness and cross over. Help us, Lord. 
Help them to change their footsteps. And stop going in circles. Going through the same old same year after year. They have their eyes on the wrong thing. Help them to focus on you and your word. And by your spirit, guide them out. You see, church, when they entered into the wilderness, and when they went on the journey, the God told the priests, and as they crossed through the promised land of Israel, God told the priests to go before them, carry the ark and the covenant. And the reason why that was is because he said, because we haven't been this way before. Let me guide you. So many need to stand still. Why? Let God catch up with you. And let him pass you. And then follow the Holy Ghost. Follow the Holy Ghost. Well, this is a difficult path. I can't get through it. Follow me. Follow me. It doesn't look right. Trust me. Trust me. Oh, oh, wow. There. The light. Holy Ghost knows. Oh, Holy Ghost knows. God knows everybody's situation. And He knows how to guide you. But you gotta have to get here. Get rid of the bug. God said, and leave it at that. No bugs. He's actually how you feel. Because if your feelings can fix it, then it'll be fixed. But they can't. I'm sincere, but you're sincerely wrong. And you call the death of two million or how many hundreds of thousands of the parents that died. And they cry, but tears mean nothing if you're crying for the wrong reason. People cry because you're hurt, but the truth of the matter is your hurt is not warranted. What you thought hurt you really didn't happen sometimes, and you just cry. Don't let your emotions deceive you. Do what God's word tells you to do and let his word override how you feel. And you'll see the light. Because in his word, he says, I send you what? Oh, your emotions take you to the right, to the left, take you back, which that still. But the word of God takes you what? Forward. And if you I feel the verse. If you hold on to God's word, he'll just lead you on out of it. He'll lead you out of that pit. He'll lead you out of that darkness. He'll lead you out of that wilderness. He'll lead you out of that storm. Because he don't stop. Where they go wrong, they forgot that God said he was going to do it. They forgot that God had his hand in it. They took it upon themselves to think for themselves. Instead of leaning on God's word, they're leaning on their own interest. They only most. They were assumed, making accusations. Not realizing that what they were saying was that God just not able. When you doubt God, you tell them he's just not able. And Jesus said he can't deny himself. And he did. But Joshua Caleb went through the same situation. But if you read it, it says, and Joshua had another spirit. Huh? He had a different spirit than the rest of those guys. I pray that when God comes through here, he finds that some of y'all got a different spirit. You're not going to go straight. You're going to stand strong. A situation coming forth, and he'll change the name because he sees something in him, like Moses did Joshua. God, let the situation, the trial come in my life, but I pray they come to, amen, strengthen me and to help me shine. For you. Precious God, we thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. I'm just going to ask the Holy Ghost to do what he does. If there's anybody that really, really wants a real change, help them to stop blocking the way, putting their feelings aside and listening to you and following your word. Help them to not follow the crowd, but be of another spirit and that of righteousness and holiness. 
Help us not to forget what you've already done, but to show appreciation for what you've done and what you're going to do. We thank you, Lord, and we appreciate you. Heal us. Remember, when you know God's will in this, in your marriage, in your ministry, in your profession, and I'm only talking about in holiness, in the will of God, in your situation. You know God is with you in the disagreement. If you know God is with you, you stand bold, whatever it is, because you can't be stopped. You don't have to get up. You stay strong and be a good character. It will come. As long as you're obedient, it will. All of heaven will see you. That's a word of courage to those of you that are living up a prophecy. That's a beautiful word of courage to those of you that are living up a prophecy. You see, I'm preaching to y'all like y'all know God is real. You see what I'm saying? I'm preaching to some of y'all like some of y'all who hear from God. You see? And that God has spoken to some of you, you see. You see, the preacher preaching, but God talks to you all because he has a right to, you understand? And God can give you a promise that's just as real as the word of God itself is. Did you know that? When Jesus was in the temple being dedicated as a baby, Simeon, I think it was in the days, an old man came in. By the Spirit, he walked in because God told him that before he died, he won't see the Messiah. And he did. Wasn't written in the prophets, but it was written on his heart by the same God. And he did. Precious God, we thank you. And we appreciate you. Let the Spirit of God guide us and keep us. In Jesus' name, the church name. The real words of mouth. Let's prepare our hearts to take our offering. But I want you to let this prayer and all the verses that I went for register. Let the word and to whoever can receive the word and receive it. Let the words from my mouth, the meditation, meditations of my heart, be acceptable. Let the prayer to take all of our offering, please. Oh, oh. I want to be the You know God is with you. You don't have to go through all that. You just stand. And if you have to stand still, you're not standing for nothing wrong, but you're standing still so that you can see the salvation of the Lord. You don't compromise when you know God is with you. you know it. Believe in God. And believe in what He says you are and who He says you are. If He says you're strong and courageous, then believe it. If He calls you the friend of God, then believe He's your friend. If He calls you a man or woman after His own heart, then believe you have a heart after God. Believe it. Walk in, stand on, no matter what comes to you. And if it's of the Lord, he'll bring it to you. 